Hello, world. How are y'all doing? Uh, hope you're doing well. Not too bad here. Uh, taking a day off, which is kind of nice. So I figured I'd stream a little bit and uh, make some progress on some things, uh, which is nice. You know, good change of pace. So I don't actually code that much at work. And I enjoy the coding. So I'm going to code live on stream and hopefully not make too big fool of myself. But nah, you know what? That's just noise, right? Um, there's stuff I know, there's stuff I don't know. There's way more stuff that I don't know than I know. Same with everybody, period. So it's all good. Um, so yeah, so just going to start off by enhancing some keyboard maestro hotkeys. Um, so what I've got is a few different, and I, I spent some time over this on the past few streams, kind of messing stuff, moving stuff around. So it's still a little bit, not exactly where I want it, but it's getting close. Um, where did that go? Oh, yeah, no, whatever. I need to get a wider camera so my hand doesn't disappear when it goes off that way. But that's for another time. Um, so these macros that I set up, um, let me open... Oh, I don't think I've got Django running. Uh, give me a second. I just there's a update for iTerm, so all my stuff stopped. So this is in Dev. This is in Launchpad, which is really Launchpad V2. So SVA to get the virtual environment up. Go into Launchpad. Manage. Oh, and actually we can just do PRS Python Run Server. Python manage runs server, but in my head it's Python runs server. There we go. So now this should work. So I've got these two little clicks here. Um, run stream prep and run post stream thing. Uh, and there's another one that I can actually run. So where is stream macros? It's just to give you an idea of what happens. Um, so this one is resize windows for full for stream. So my, my monitor is larger than what y'all can see. Um, I have it cropped in and um, cropped in, whatever, uh, to make the fonts a little bit bigger. So I run, run these keyboard maestro commands to resize the windows to fit into the cropped area and make sure they're really in there specifically. Um, and so there's two settings that I have. The first setting is the one you're seeing, which is where there's a chat window that's over here. Um, and then my little GIF up here that you can update. And the second one is this full one. So it moves the chat window out and the GIF window out. So just to show you kind of what happens when we run them, here's the run. It just goes through all this, goes through all the windows basically and moves everything over and gets it all set up for the larger thing. Ta-da, there we go. Uh, and then we can actually bring it, and then so the, I've got it wired up now so that I can actually do this run stream prep. And it actually does some other things besides just doing the windows. It closes some applications that I don't want to have open just for memory stuff or whatever. And what else does it do? It uh, run stream prep. So close non-stream apps, update configs for pre-stream. So that's this one which basically updates shell the, sorry, it uses the shell to upgrade, upgrade update um, font sizes in Sublime Text. So it just goes through and finds the config file for Sublime Text and then changes it to get the font size properly for a stream. Same thing with PyCharm, quits and restarts it because that needs to happen. Um, resizes all the windows for chat. So I've separated those things out so they're independent and then opens windows for me to look at just to make sure there everything's clean um and then so i can run those independently now which is nice because i've got that i've got that batch of like do everything to prep for the stream and i can also just fire this one off if i want to switch the um and i've got this one in a hotkey too so i can just switch back and bring chat into the mix again which takes a second but it's way faster than having to do that by hand um so there's still a couple things that I want to do. Um, and by a couple things, I mean a bunch of things. Get rid of that, there we go. Uh, so first thing, so I want to do, so font sizes, 
are a thing. Um, so I want to look at font sizes. I want to look at seeing if I can close the windows for applications for the apps. So like, I just don't want a bunch of crap open basically when I start streaming. Um, so you can start with a clean slate and not like go, Hey, check this out. And then I've got like eight files open, have to close them all on stream. Right. So we're going to look at that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go into BB edit, if I can find it. This is a file and then new. Yeah, this is another file. Oh yeah. I've got another hotkey that brings that stuff back when it does that. Um, so there's two files, both of which are untitled, untitled and not saved. So I'm going to create a new one here, which we're going to call close app windows, close stream app windows. Close stream up windows. So we're not going to trigger anything yet. Um, let's just see what's in here. Close open, close the CDs tray. That's not super helpful. Quit. Nope. Uh, window. No, it's gotta be close or quit, right? Hmm. Bring a window to the front. Activate window switcher. What is that? Hmm. Okay. I keep finding new stuff in Keyboard Maestro. Um, manipulate a window. Minimize. Bring to front. Toggle zoom. Close. Aha. That's what we're looking for. close in BB edit window with title front title prompt window uh, try it see what happens uh, actually let's put BB edit over the side so you can see it Eventually I make a hotkey for that too, but I'm not going to do that right now. Maybe I am. Uh, run. Save documents for, for closing. Look at that. Okay, so at least let me look at them. And if there's nothing open, then because I, I usually don't have to like I'm getting better about like closing and saving stuff now. I don't leave stuff open as much because I want to make it easier for when I'm streaming. Um, whoa. Yeah. Okay. See, so that's it. So if you just quit the application. But then you fire it back up again, it still has all the stuff there, which is not what I want to have happen. Oh, it even made a new one. Um, so this is just sending a command to it that says close window. Yeah. Now the question is, because what would be nice, let's look at the script editor for a minute. Window library. Uh, why isn't BB added in here? Let's add it. BB edit. There we go. Open. Ooh, it's got all kinds of stuff. Unix scripting. Run Unix script, run Unix filter. Uh, that's interesting. 
HTML scripting. Oh, is this, hang on. I don't know. Maybe it's got all kinds of crazy stuff in it. It's funny, I'm learning more and more about all these things as I'm doing the streaming stuff. Um, required suite, open print run, print settings. Standard suite, that's what I was looking for. Set, save, make, get, get. What does get give us? Get as list of type any. Okay. Move, make exists. Delete count. Try a number of elements in a particular thing. So, because what would be nice, I'm only gonna spend a couple minutes on this, but I wanna see if, what would be great is if you could loop through the windows and close them individually like this, so that you could get a chance to see what's in them. Um, as compared to that other, the way that it's doing right now, it just closes everything. Project window, project document. Project window. All kinds of stuff. Contains text contained by text windows. Hmm. Eh, you know what? I'm not gonna mess with it right now. So this gives you the chance to change. Let me see if um display text. You won't see this because it's up in the side. Um made it here. This is something else I'm getting better at is doing like the don't try and build the moon, just get the first thing done kind of thing. Build the moon. Um, display text large. What does that do? Try. Okay, there you go. So what I want to see is, um, oh, I can't click what's well, doing that. There we go. Oh, that's not what I meant. Yeah, that takes over. You can't click past it. Um, actually, is there an X on that? No, you just gotta wait till it's done. It's a bummer. Uh, display text and window. Let's try that. There we go. Made here. So, eh, we'll do it large. What I want to see is if I run this and it pops open that command that says, hey, do you want to close these files? Is that a blocking action? Does it stop this part of the macro until I've made a decision there? Or does it, as soon as it sends the command, run and do this one? Um, because that may change the way that I approach this. Um, so let's click them both and try. Yeah, see. It just sends the command over and then like it's BB at it's still sitting here doing doing its thing. Um and the trick with that is I'm trying to think if that's Okay, because like the app's still running and I can just close out the windows as I see fit. So it just it just pops them up for me and just lets them go. I think it's okay. Okay, we're gonna try that for a while. Um, Cause also if we have, whoops. If we've got keyboard maestro and there's a window open with nothing in it, it just closes it. It doesn't have to ask because there's no text in it. So it doesn't trigger the, are you sure you wanna close it? And yes, no, save. Um, Okay, so we're gonna get this. We're gonna make that so we can see what's going on. Close stream app windows, and we're gonna paste here. We're gonna paste here, there we go. Close front window. Oh, and really what I should do
uh, where is my... For each window and Windex. <laughs> Windex? Windex, the window index. Close stream out for Windows. So really what we want to do is put this in here. Because we want to loop through all the windows. For each collection windows, window count counting upwards. Execute the following action, close front window. Yeah, somehow this talks back into that, I think. Because, like, you're not defining. All right, or do you need to. Hang on a second. Okay, you need to activate it first. That makes sense. I was trying to figure out how I was talking to it. So let's put this up here. So we're going to activate BB Edit, then we're going to loop through the windows and close the windows in BB Edit. And let me see with these, did I just do front application? Yeah, so we're making the assumption that when you activate the thing, it stays activated, which is implicit instead of explicit, but I'm going to risk it for now. Uh, close stream app windows. Leave that. Doesn't hurt you to be more explicit. All right, so here's one window. And actually, so save, we're gonna save this to desktop. Kill this dot text. And then we're gonna put another document inside that same window. This is also to kill, save that. Kill this two dot dot text. And then we're gonna make an entirely new window instead of just the putting the documents inside the window. So this is the other window. Save. Kill X3. All right, so now let's see what happens. Um, and so the, those are all saved. So let's just see if it closes all of them. Run. Nope, it does not. What's this? For each action sets the variable you specified at the start of the action window index to each entry in the collection of performs and close actions. Your action doesn't. Your actions do not appear to use the variable. That's true, I'm not using it for each. Oh, window index. No, that's already a variable name. For one to the window count, why didn't that work? Like, I don't care that I'm not using it, it's just supposed to close it. Uh... Wait, window. Close the front window, window with the window index. Window, do, index. So hopefully it snags these windows indexes. There's an Apple script I was doing that was weird because if you it didn't grab all the indexes and then close the windows. It like, if you close the window, it, it altered the index list. I don't think that happens here. I think this keeps them going. Like, I think it snags the window indexes first. So here's another one. I'm gonna leave that one empty. Here's another one that we'll put some text in. 
And again, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and save all these for now. This is saved. Save. Kill. Save. All right. So now let's give this a shot. A shot. A shot. Okay. Place your bets. Actually, don't click that. Click out there. Click here. Whatever. Run. Close two documents. Ah! <laughs> See, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. It's if it's if it's sitting there, um, walking up. Whoa. Something just really happened with my headphones. There we go. Oh, uh, I might have killed them. Oh, no, wait, there's a... Hang on. I forgot you can plug them in. And there's a plug. It's not just hardwired. So I just yanked the plug a little bit. And all of a sudden, audio went to one ear and not the other. And I was like, eh, that's a bummer. Gotta buy new headphones. Now my ears feel funny. So I think, I think this is gonna be okay. Cause I don't use BB out that much anyways. So yeah, we're gonna run with this. Okay, so that's close the app windows. Okay. Same thing with sublime text. Um. Sublime Text should be easier because Sublime Text automatically, and I wish BB Edit did this. Sublime Text auto saves whenever you leave the thing. So everything is saved except for complete untitled documents. Um, so we're just going to copy and paste and then change. So Sublime Text 3, which is this one. Starting in the front, leave it at the front. Loop through the windows, close window. It's a blind text. I think that's good. Uh, so we've got one, two, yeah, we've got a couple windows open. We've got a bunch of windows open, whatever. Bring that down here. Try. Do you want to save? Okay. So that one didn't save. It's weird. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, manipulation one did fail. So it must have a timeout in there. Save. No such file or directory. Browsing history. Yes, I killed that. I know I killed that. So that's good. This is the one that's the problem. Don't save. Okay. Try. Manipulation failed. Come on. Try. See, it doesn't. Okay, that doesn't work so good. Hmm. Uh, sublime text. Window, window count. That just didn't work. Which I don't understand why. So sublime text, we're just gonna make a bunch of windows and a few tabs. Just a bunch of junk. Whole bunch of junk. There we go. And try it again. Manipulation failed. Index five is what it's saying up here. But if I run it again. Catches one of them. Yeah, so you need to be consistent. All right, so. Apple script close.
Tell application finder to close every window. To open home, to set toolbar. Okay, so let's try this. Uh, oh, and actually we can just throw it straight in Sublime Text. And, or sorry, straight in um, Keyboard Maestro. All right, so we got a few different windows here. Also, Sublime Text default new window position is about eight pixels above where I keep, where I have all the stuff set up for the stream, which at some point I just need to move everything up eight because sometimes it just goes a little bit high and it kind of annoys me. All right, so I'm going to drop this for now because we can recreate these easily if we need them. Uh, execute. Apple script. Paste. Sublime text. Try. Uh, yes. No, it gave me an error up there. Uh, script editor it is. Let's find sublime text. Unable to add item because it is not scriptable. That's kind of a bummer. Um, sublime text. Let me look in the menu for a second because there's. It's got, yeah, uh, that says close window, is what that says. And it's activated because the other thing that you can do is so control shift W and now, now I can't hit it. Um, can you do a key press? Type keystroke. Because what you could do, well, that's a little dangerous, is just hit con Control W or Control Shift W or Command, whatever it is. Sublime text command line. Oops. Sublime help. Oh, we don't have it. SUBL. SUBL. Oh, I didn't hook it up yet. Oh, maybe I put it here. Yeah. Edit the given files, open the given directories, edit and stand in, right? This is all the same stuff, yeah. Load the given project, run a given command, open a new window, add folders, wait for files to be closed for returning. Don't activate the application, okay. Wait is implied. Okay, file names may be given a line or a line number called to go to a specific location. That's cool. So what commands can we run? Close. Sublime text commands. Commands. 
Command description, left delete, right delete, delete. Close, close file. Close file. <gasps> it worked. Yank. Kill Ring. Kill Ring Yank is the name of my new band. Uh, okay, this just got interesting. Left delete, right delete, delete word, insert, overwrite, toggle, dupe, join. Wow, you could really mess with somebody by putting a little script on their thing that just occasionally, like, transpose. Selections, undos, copy paste, scrolling, bookmarks, marks, kill ring, file management, open. I want to list switching files. Next view, select by index. Select a file and the current group by index. Index, index to select. How do we see? So that's the number of geometry of groups. Oh, interesting, so look at that. Focus group, toggle sidebar, build. Fresh folder list, close folder list, okay. Finds, macros, indents, snippets, autocomplete, settings, miscellaneous. Doesn't show us how Switch file, extensions list. Wish I could click on that. List. So there's file one. Here's, whoops, I guess we should do different letters. There's file two. Didn't switch. What if we make a new file? Maybe drag it down here. And we put in these letters. What does this do? Nothing. Ah, come on. Switch file list. What does that do? Oh. Made a new file called list goes back to list if we do list two makes a new file that's cool okay select by index selects a file on the current group by index how do we get the index so st command select file by index one One, how do we get to this? Nope, keeps making files. When you select a menu item or press key binding, you're issuing a command to sublime text. All commands have a name and some take arguments. The available commands are documented here for use in your key bindings, macros, whatever. Where's our file thing? Did we just hit, what was it, close? What was it? Close file? Close is the current file. And close file, clone file. What happens if you do that? Close file. Don't save. I 
trying to get the list. Sublime text, get index, file list. When files are being indexed, uh, nope, not really what we're looking for. Scanning files in project, yeah. Awesome, it was detected, index slow again. It's not helping. So, climb, text, command, close file. Sublime text, end line, close file. Window close behavior. Add the function to close all windows without saving. Let's see what's in there. Save this in your user directory and create a key binding. Be careful when choosing how to call this. You don't accidentally, accidentally delete everything. You can type the command in the console. You don't have to write a full plugin. It's just convenient if you want to do it regularly. Uh, what happens if you... Can you send... What happens if we do this? close anything. Nope, didn't do anything. Um, send sublime text external command. External command. Send a shell, send commands to Sublime Console. Is so there ready to run terminal commands within Sublime Text? No. The commands. all over command line over here. What we got? Reference. Uh, I feel like this is not helping us. Command line usage. Let's just link over to that. Yep, set up the same thing. Command, command. Ah, oh, come on. It's gotta be a way to do this. Like, so I can close files, right? I just gotta see... Allows you to execute arbitrary commands from the command line. Sublime text help. Blah blah blah. Command argument. Expects you to provide the command and any arguments. Insert characters, hello world, right? Let's wait for any command and just like the Sublime Console text command. Commands target the current view. And window command counts. Okay. This will work for any command. 
Hmm. So once it in quotes. Insert characters. So where was our original shortcut foo? Close that for now. Close that for now. Where are our commands? Where are our commands? Commands. Probably right here. You go over there. Commands. Move. Oh, wait, this is all different. Or it's a different thing. Format. Whatever. Index. Move to group. Focus view. Aw. Uh -huh. Close. Close project. Oh, closes the project. Open project. Edit project. Scan project. Close all. ST and close all. Nope. So close, we thought. Because, wait, hang on. Close file really works, right? I do not want to save those changes. Is that going to do the same thing, even though I didn't put anything in there? Yeah, it does. Okay. I guess once you name the file, it considers it having changed. Because if you just make a new one, I can close, like this should close without asking the question. Yep. It's only, so once you name it, then it wants to have a thing. I mean, you could just call it close a ton of times, right? Because again, I don't want to just quit the app because that's not going to close it. Because when you fire it back up, all the windows would still be there. I am a tiny bit red. Not that I can change it. And eh, whatever, it's fine. Color balance, who knows. I should make me black and white, but I think that'd be distracting. Docs one. Sublime text. See, this is it says docs one. I'm looking for docs three. There we go. Yeah, so close file. Select by index. Selects a file and the current group by index. That's the only thing it has indexed, but. Close. Close folder list, close project, close with current project. Setting the window to a clean slate. Didn't do nothing. Hmm. And then the last, there's only, oh, there's a couple closes. Five, close, close current file. Close folder list, close project, and then back to file. It says you can do that with any command though. 
Let's try this. So one of the things that's up there, close all files. Too good to be true. Because if I do close all files, cancel, whatever. So the other thing we might be able to do, select or show menu item. All right, let's try this. So in Sublime Text 3, or Sublime Text, menu, Whoa, look, oh, look at this. You can't see it down there. Sublime text, sublime text file, aww. Actually, hang on a second. Let me see if I can put that where you can see it. So menu, sublime text, file, Close all files. Hang on, I'll try this one more time. See if we can throw it all the way up there. Sublime text. Menu title, menu option. Uh, file. Close all files. Again, it says close all files down there. I can't make it go. Oh, look at that. File, close all files. Try. All right, so it's asking me. That fires it up. Cool. Okay. So hang on. Cancel. So. So that that's okay, because it blocks on doing that. So that's fine. Because I don't want it to close without me looking at them. But. Uh, ooh, that was very loud, wasn't it? So new window, new window, new window, new window, new window. It's weird where it puts it. Like, I don't know how it decides where to put stuff. All right, so we got all those. And this one has two tabs, three tabs. These two are playing, that one has two tabs. Everything effectively is saved here. So if we run, if we try this, what happens? That is surprising. Because if we're in Sublime Text and we close and close all files, oh, it doesn't work there either. Oh, that's odd. Close file works. Close all files. It only works if there's that okay how no oh, command shift in opens a new like what is it opening it's just opening a new window but there's no like file in it but if i hit Control w there it closes i don't understand that all right but so if we do That might be okay. So hang on a second. Here, let's do this. We're gonna go get those other files that we had a second ago. Whoops, that was definitely the wrong button. That was the wrong button. All right, 
so we have four files and I'm gonna move one of these tabs into there. So there's two tabs in there, one tab there, one tab there. Whatever. Now what happens? It just does it for whatever window is open. All right, let me look at that one more time. So put that in there. There's our two, here's a one and a one. So if we do close all files from the menu, same thing. It only does it for the active menu, window, which is not really what I would have, would have thought. Close window, closes, right? Close window, close all files, close window, whatever. So if I quit it and restart, I just want to make sure. Yeah, it just starts with an empty thing. Okay. <sighs> Window. Show status menu, get a show. Whoops. Window, minimize zoom, new tab, bring all to front, untitled. So, all right, let's see what show gives us. So for sublime text, sublime text window. Interesting, okay. If I just try this, what happens? Oh, it just makes it pop up. How would we... God, be a way to do that. I mean, you could just fire, close all fire, close all files a bunch, or close fire, close file a bunch, or close window. Because close window. File, close window. Kills all the files in the window. So you could just fire off close window a bunch, I guess. It's gross, but. Uh, menu, sublime text, file, close window. Like, if I try it, oh yeah, see it, it doesn't like it because it's disabled. Ooh, I wonder if you can tell if it's disabled. Tell if menu is disabled. Menu is disabled alert. This can be dealt with by opening the menu before selecting the menu option. Leave the menu item blank and select or show, wait. Menu items are flaky on occasion. Not too surprising when the menu has dynamic content that changes when the menu loads. That can be dealt with by opening the menu before selecting the menu item. Leave the menu op leave the menu item blank in select or show menu item action. Gotcha. So that but that just forces it to open. If the dynamic one changes, sometimes in the sidebar, you can write in the menu, show sidebar, hide sidebar. So 
Max like Scribner using all dynamic items. Oh, I was really hoping there would be a way. Select a show menu item, selects a menu and or shows. Yep. You can choose to execute a menu in the front app, app or a specific app. Okay, so we can leave it blank and see everything. Okay, so you can toggle back and forth from menu items. That's cool. For seven, unlike most text fields, and select do not process text tokens. Select menu will by default abort the macro if it's not successful. For example, if the menu cannot be found, it's disabled. The action can be configured to allow the macro to continue if the menu is not essential, such as mark as red, which might be disabled if the item is already marked as red. So, notify on failure, failure aborts macro. So can you use failure Does failure propagate up? Select menu will, by default, abort the macro if the action is not su successful. For example, if the menu cannot be found or is disabled. The action can be configured to allow the macro to continue if the menu is, is not essential. So just mark as red, which might be disabled. Oh, it kicks off the whole macro. Okay, so it's not just that it runs out of this particular thing. Yeah, I don't like that. Everything he's going to keep uh, key maestro keyboard maestro six condition menu ooh menu condition looks for a matching menu in the system menu and to test its state. All right, so select or show. My path, bundle ID, recent more. Menu. Try, disable, set color, text, duplicate, and group. Menu condition. Alternatively, you can look for a menu based on the shortcut, command C, or look at a specific menu based on its path. A menu path looks like this. You can test if, great, how do we do this? See all conditions. How do we use conditions? Oh, is this like an if? Is there like an if else thing going on here? If all the con conditions are true. Okay, here we go. Menu condition. A menu. 
with this name. There we go. Okay, there's our F. That's what we needed. This is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, now that you're in the menu items, now we can go back and look at BB Edit too. can use any of these separators for a path. Makes a little smiley. So what we want to have for sublime text is file. Close window. Actually close file, I guess. Oh, this is actually interesting. Uh, you can't see it. Uh, I don't have a good way to move it yet. Um, you could... Hang on a second. Uh, okay, I think it's going to show the full screen. No, just the upper part. Okay, that's cool though. Um, you could actually go through and write some logic. That saves every file before closing it. I mean, it's got to auto save, so that's fine. But maybe we can look at that at BB edit. But I think if we just do this and close window. Whoops. Crap. I don't know what I said. Is that back to normal? I think that's back to normal. Yeah, okay. Uh, close window. Execute the following actions. Uh, no, we don't want to quit it. Oh, we, so if it's available. Okay, if all the conditions are true. So I've got an if, I need a I need a loop. We'll get to that in a second. Menu. So we're selecting menu item. So if if it's hot. Menu, sublime text, file, close window. So if it's available, use it. Now how... Oh, so you could set... You could set a variable in a for loop. for each um is there a while loop hang on is there a while 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 all the conditions are true add conditions so while 
any window condition. Wow. So can you put an action in here? Action result condition is okay. Execute the following actions. I wonder if that, I don't know how that works yet. Application condition, button, calculation, glitch board. Environment variable. This may be what we're looking for. Oh, we don't want the environment though. We want uh, found key location condition of a group menu condition. There we go. So oh, you don't even have to do the if. You can do this here. While that is enabled. It doesn't give you a menu. It doesn't give you an application. So we've got to switch the application. But while that's there, we want to close it. All right, we're going to get rid of this. Sublime text. So while it's alive, do it. <laughs> I tell you, keyboard maestro, folks. Interesting little app. All right, one, two, three. Um, we'll open some files. So every I'm gonna have everything in a saved state to start this first test. Uh, put that up there, so those are connected. That's all one. That's there. I guess I could move these. I almost should have made hotkey to do this. And then there's our batch of untitled. So we're here. Let's get to where we can see them all. So we're going to jump to Sublime Text. While file close window is available, is enabled in the select menu of Sublime Text, file. Yeah, it's weird that it doesn't have the jump to an application here. Well, all the following are true. Currently false. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Watch this. Currently false. Crap. I thought it would go to currently true. What if we do this? Try that. Maybe it won't work. All right, let's see. That and that, currently false, but why didn't it change? Menu item with this name, file, close window. Okay, we'll just try it. Oh, maybe it's gotta be sublime text. Here, hang on, let's see what happens. Nope, didn't work. All of the following are true. A menu item with this name. Uh, name matching. How about this? Oops. There we go. Got it, okay. So that's how we clean up Sublime Text. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's really cool. And so what we can also do, let's look at BB Edit. it got closed document 
So if we've got those and we've got a new window with two things in it. And we got a new window. We have a new window with no things in it. Oh, actually, I guess I can bring that back. So there's that, there's that. We'll see these momentarily. There's that. So I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna copy this, paste this. So while menu item, let's close. Currently false, it's super weird. Oh, currently true. Okay, so it takes a second. So BB edit, it's called close window. Uh, want to do close window or close document? Close document. So it'd be cool. True. Okay, it does pick it up. Look at that. So you can test. Oh. Solid, solid, solid. Close document. S U M E N T. Close document. So now. Try. Pew, pew, pew. Oh. Oh. Try. Why didn't that work? Oh, because I'm not there. Wait, what? Hang on. Try. Select item fail as target menu item closed document macro file canceled. Whatever. Why? Close documents always there. Did I spell it wrong? File. It's under file, right? File. Close document. Here, let's find it this way. Oop, BB edit. File, close document. Oh, was I in the wrong? Did I have that? For sublime text. That would do it. OK. Okay, you can do it to the front application, but I want to be explicit about that. All right, cross fingers. Try. Zip. Sweet. That's awesome. That is very awesome. That's because that's another thing that I was that took. That's one of the few things that takes me some time is to go through and like, okay, here's all the windows and close them and look at them or whatever. But just like, I can just zip through them and close them. If they're not saved, I can save them. You know what you should do? You go new, you go new, auto, close, save windows with keyboard, maestro. macro you have for BB edit and sublime text make a post about that okay 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 cool 
progress, good progress. So close stream apps, stream app windows. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll that. So what other apps do I have? Text Wrangler. So, hang on, Sublime Text, Sublime Text 2, I should do Sublime Text 2. Sublime Text 2. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing... Oh, you can set timeouts on them, that's cool. This just feels like a collection of everything somebody who's into automation can think of just thrown in. And I've said this before, but like when I first looked at this app, I didn't get it at all. Like it just looked like I was, it reminds me, I've said this before too. It reminds me of Photoshop where when you first look at it, you're like, that doesn't look like it does much. Or I don't know, actually Photoshop is still like that today, it, but it used to be, why in Photoshop launching? Yeah, so Photoshop used to launch without all this stuff. And so you just see like this little sidebar and this little top bar and a big black canvas. And it's just like, it doesn't look like it does much. <laughs> but boy, does it. And Keyboard Maestro is fitting right into that, um, right in that same pocket. I kind of avoided it for a while because I was like, I don't want to think, rely on it or whatever, blah, 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 but okay. Like it's version nine, it's solid. And like the other thing that I'm adapting to is like the impermanence of things. Like I used to be very much be really frustrated and really aggravated if I couldn't get something to work and be permanent. Um, and like the idea of like this kind of scripting stuff just wasn't there for me. Or like writing scripts and having them like really explicitly, like cool. But like this always felt like loosey goosey. But now I'm just like, this is very effective. I like it. So if all the following are true, so let's see what Sublime Text 2 has to offer. File. It also has close window. So close window. We're gonna do it in Sublime Text 2. Yeah, I still I feel like I'm missing the app in here. If all of the following are true, when menu, when name is matching, is enabled, exist, but is not enabled. Ooh, does not exist. Ugh, see, like, it's just a collection of like, you're doing a thing and then you're like, oh, we can't do that yet. And then you add it into the mix. All right, so here's our Sublime Text 2 run. Uh, Sublime Text 2. So there's that one, there's this one. Okay, so we're gonna put three windows in this one. One there, one there, and one there. Boop, boop, boop. And selected, selected. Boop. That's really cool. Uh, okay, so Adam loop back to text wrangler. Oh uh, yeah, might as well do text wrangler too. Here, we'll do that off BB edit since they're made by the same crew. Text wrangler. Uh, what does text wrangler call it? Text Wrangler calls it something that's over here. Close document. So if we change this this time to this, close that, it closed. That's really cool because I can actually, so I, I keep that window over there for different nodes. But so I can open that, I can close all those windows and I can open it and do a new one. And again, that just, this is all just getting, like clearing the deck so that stuff's ready to go. Oh, I could actually pick up everything that's on the desktop and save it into a new folder. Uh, 
I am liking this app. Yeah, and so you can also just run it. And nothing happens, right? Oh, yeah, because it activates the applications, so it's firing stuff up. Um, that's really neat. And then, yeah, and so I can open Windows then if I decide I want to have them. Um, so this, so run stream prep. We're going to close the non-stream applications. We're going to update the configs. for our pre-stream stuff, which is setting all the fonts to the right size. Where's update? Fix. Quit and relaunch. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna move that to the first thing because PyCharm takes a while to load. Um, unless I close out that window. Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out the order that I want to do this stuff in. Because like PyCharm, well, so what I could do, oh, okay. So this could get really interesting. <laughs> PyCharm open recent. Oh, you could go all the way through that. Yeah, so I think Yeah, I'm just going to start with a full clean slate. I'm going to close the oh, you can't see that again. Um this is for PyCharm. It says close project. Um Actually, give me one second cuz I think what I can do here I rename this better faster yeah so it's got closed projects so I can I can just close out all the projects and also I could close can you close the windows in the projects window close project new project window previous oh sorry next Editor tabs. Close. Okay, so that's where you got to go to close all the stuff. Oh, interesting. I wonder if... So, like... If we've got numbers open here, I just want to close this and restart Scratchpad again. Or, sorry, restart PyCharm. See, one of the tricks with this is PyCharm. So, in order to change the font for PyCharm, you update a config file, but then you have to close the app and restart the app. Uh, but that takes some time. So, what I'm thinking I'm doing is just gonna shut everything, like just close everything. And then maybe start Scratchpad up again. I don't know. Okay, so it does keep an idea of what's up. I need to go through in here and just look at all the stuff. 
I was trying to see if there's a way. <sighs> okay, so how tricky do we want to get with this? Um, we want to get tricky. Because, like, I'm in this, I just want to do it and then not have to worry about it again. And also, I'm learning a tremendous amount about Keyboard Maestro. All right, so close not in stream apps, close stream app windows. Okay. Uh, we're gonna make a new one that's close that's close and open by charm. This could get tricky. So, but like, I've, I think I've got, so I've, I've got, as long as I can read a value, I'm okay. Next project window. All right, so first things first, let's close, let's close all the windows. So we're gonna activate PyCharm here. I'm just gonna grab this from uh, here. Close and open PyCharm. So we're gonna go to PyCharm. While Oh, so we're going to need to loop through this twice, but that's okay. We can start with this. Because I want to close, I want to clean slate in the applications too, and the projects. Because if I close, I can just, I can go through and close the projects and get all of them closed. Like I know how to do that. But when I open them, they'd come back to wherever, whatever set of files is open. And I kind of don't want that. I actually want to be starting fresh, basically. Um, not basically, I want to start fresh. So I want to close all the windows first. And so that is, so. In PyCharm. We're looking for a menu that's in PyCharm. It's called window. That's called active tool window. Close active tab. Is that it? Hang on. Editor tabs. What are tool window tabs? Hide all windows, view mode. Hide all windows. Oh, is that this? Okay. Oh, I guess you can have tabs up in there too. So editor tabs. Close, right? Closes that. Whoops, no, that wasn't it. That was not what I was expecting. Window. Editor tabs. Close. I closed it. Wait, but if I was over here, does that close it? It does. Oh, it's got close all too. Select tab, select next. Close unmodified, close all to the left. 
reopen close splits configure editor tabs what is this I love it. It's like, eh, it's just a text editor, except, you know, totally more than that. All right, so here we go. We're going to see what editor tab close all does. Got it. And if this is, if we're selected in here. Okay, so close all just closes all the stuff that we want to close. Perfect. Um, that's the state that I'm looking for. What do we call it? Editor tabs, close all. PyCharm, window, editor tabs, close all. Ah, submenus. So if a menu item See, this is where it feels like I should be able to do. Editor tabs. That if I go to pie charm. Currently false. See, it feels like that should work. So if I just do it at close all, it switches out to... Also, I know that this isn't Yeah, currently true, so it sees that. I'm just assuming close all doesn't exist anywhere else, because what you don't want to have happen is close all to exist in some other menu and it be active. Like, notate, like that right there. Because if that's active, your while loop will never close, because it'll keep trying to hit this one. That's why I told you to set a timeout. Ninety nine hours. That would be enough. Uh, Ten seconds. Sure to set up timeouts on the while loops. It's a good little skate patch. Abort after timeout, notify after timeout. Cool. Sounds good. But why so if name matching Uh what was it called? Pie charm. See, I want to be more editor editor tabs. Oh, actually, it's literally right here. All right, what if we just do this? Currently false, but if we go to PyCharm, still false. Keyboard, Maestro, menu, while. Match. We can, for example, a rag up formula I can do with blah blah blah. Macro triggers condition. See, this is where we were. But that doesn't seem to work. Currently false. Still false. I don't understand it. You can pass a reg X.
Matching. False. Still false. With this name, no. Wait, was there something about that in while loops there? Status menu, you can have macro execute when it's selected from, this needs to go away. Oh, no, that's not what we're looking for. See, again, it keeps going to six. I just keep looking at this feeling like someone's gonna, I'm missing something. Uh, hang on, what if, uh... I don't know. How's that work? Nope. Enter tabs, close all. Why doesn't that work? What about a pipe? Oh, wait, how? What about this? Nope. Containing? So you can't stack that. Well, all the following are true. A menu item with a name containing close all is enabled, but we need, so like editor tabs, right? So currently false, but if we switch to PyCharm, currently true, okay. Close all, false. Should've worked. Uh, this. Matching. True, okay, yeah, cause right, it works. So editor tabs, see, come on. Well, what you could do is you could look at another tab that doesn't have another name match. So like close all is here, but you could do like close all but pinned. Assuming that that is also alive at the same time. It's not. Close unmodified maybe. But it's risky to look at something that's not there. But the close on modified would work. Because like that doesn't look like it's showing up anywhere else. And like this this is gonna be fine almost all the time. But like I like getting things I like trying to see if we can solve this, right? Uh yeah, that close on modified is gonna be a good one to bounce off of. But I still don't understand. Okay, so how about this? I just had an idea. Text wrangler. So, uh, sublime text. Uh, sublime text two. Let's just get them all going. Nope, two. So, at 140, 45. 
question about keyboard maestro. All right, so here's the question. I'm in this editor and I'm trying to run a while loop looking at a tab by looking at a menu item. And if that menu item exists, keep hitting it um, for as long as it's open. And the, the specific, oh, I have not been doing the right thing for a long time. Um, take two. Uh, actually, yeah, let's try that again. So here we go, 141.20. And let's put these back so we can see what's going on. All right, so here's the trick that I'm having. Um, let me let these things finish circling up. Text Wrangler needs to go away. Um, whatever, it's fine there. I'm trying to build an action that looks at PyCharm and uh, triggers this action window, editor tabs, close all. So that's what I'm trying to get to. And I want to close that for as many times as it's there. Or sorry, I only want to fire it off if it's there, but I want to make sure that it fires off. So I need to look at it, make sure it's there and then go. Or, well, I guess what you could do is you could fail out. Anyways, um, but my understanding from reading this page, uh, which we'll put in the notes, is that in order to get a match to a menu item, like edit, speech, start speaking. I just had an idea. Do I ha does that have to be the full path? Or can it be, because what I was trying to do is just do editor tabs, which is one level down, which I, I stole from here. So this, I got this explicitly, so these match. But when I do that and I go to PyCharm, it stays false, it doesn't hit it. Um, if I just drop off to editor tabs, editor tabs, and come back over to PyCharm, it goes true. So like that part's working. But the question is, does it have to be all the way? Yeah, see, it still doesn't work. So name, and that's with name matching. And it's window, editor tabs, choose all, close all, excuse me. So that doesn't match. And then same thing if it's name containing, and I come over here. No match. With this name, still false. So I can't figure out how to safely get to close all because the, the problem is, I don't know if you can be able to see it in this one. Uh, it's the wrong app. But right here, there's another close, there's other close alls that are available. And I don't want to have one of those be open like if there's a notification up and I was trying to close the windows, that would go forever. I've set a timeout to try and prevent that, but I want to see if there's a way to actually prevent it and explicitly hit that one. So that's my question and my um, request, I guess, is to figure out how to do that. So thanks. Break. <laughs> uh, that's the support request. There you go. Uh, and now I'm going to keep messing with it. Um, Yeah, it still doesn't, it, it feels like you should be able to do that. Cause like, I feel like I'm missing something. We can try these other arrows. What about this arrow? Does that arrow work? So false. Still false. So edit speech, start speaking, right? And like, I'm literally copying and pasting window. 
Edit tabs. Close all. Falsy, falsy, false. With this name is enabled. Path. Nope. Menu item path, keyboard maestro. Menu item path, keyboard maestro. Recent topic as an example of both if and else and numerous methods. Working path, menu item with path. Okay, so they're mushed together. <sighs> also, they use these. True, okay. So that, those docks. Are not accurate. And confusing. Menu based on its path, okay. I missed that part, that's on me. But like these operators don't work. Okay, new, new support thing. We're gonna forget the first one. Uh, 148.15. So here's a keyboard maestro thing that I ran into. It took me some confusion. I thought I'd missed the part where this is a path. I got that now. But if I'm in Keyboard Maestro, according to the documentation, I can use any of these separators in a path. And so I've grabbed this one, copy, and I put that in here, paste, paste. And so I'm, I'm targeted at PyCharm. Uh, and so if I come over here, PyCharm, that is false. It does not pick it up. If I change the operators, the divisors, the whatevers you call them, separators, to just those, and I come back over to PyCharm, it goes true. So the docs seem incorrect there. Uh, and actually, let me try just one of the other ones just to see what happens. So we know it works. Oh yeah, so the other thing I want to try actually is spaces, just to see while we're here. So spaces works too, okay. But so if I try this separator, stays false, okay. Just FYI, that looks like a bug um, or at least a mismatch with the documentation. Cause if I switch it back, come over here, goes true. So cool, thanks. Uh, I'm digging the app, I really am. Uh, watch the prior however many hours of this on the previous stream if you are curious. Um, so great, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, all right, back to it. I feel like I should have like a like. Be right back. All right, cool. That's the consider that the separator between this and the other thing. But cool. So I've got this now. Okay, so this is cool. So I can go activate PyCharm. I can close down the windows. I can close down all the windows. Close all the windows. So here we go. All the stuff is up. Right. So this will work on the active project because it's not jumping windows yet. 
So we're just going to run this and we should see. Uh, where are my tabs? There are my tabs. This visible? Yeah, this is visible. Uh, here, I need this to go over here. And we'll bring this down a little bit. So activate PyCharm while you're in PyCharm. Oh, if you're still watching, it'd also be cool if you had like a menu item that connects. So like this lets you select the menu item from PyCharm. This one doesn't have that for the while loop. Doesn't super matter. It just, I keep looking for it. Um, oh, actually, I wonder if, ah, whatever, it's fine. So much stuff in there. Um, so we're going to look for that close all. And if it exists, we're going to close them. So, whoops, that happens a lot. Select, select, try, boom, close them. Okay, now it gets tricky. Um, or that was tricky, turned out. Uh, here, let's actually do this. Show uh, loop for PyCharm T H A R M with menu paths paths. Um. Okay, so we got that. So we can we can close all the windows for any of our apps. So how? So we've got next project, but if we, so if I close out this project window, next project isn't there. Cool. All right. So here's the logic I think we can do is if, if scratch pad pie exists, that's the one, that's the one. Well, what you could do No, you wouldn't even need to do that, right? So I'm cool. So I'm trying to like right now. I was trying to th think about having like scratch pads still be up, but I can bring it back up. Um, I think, yeah, because I could do that through the recents because it's always going to be recent. Um, field property, file properties. That's cool. Yeah. So, but first, let's close them all. So the process is going to be close all the windows, close the project, and then what in that while loop so execute the following actions so while close all is available you would close all the windows and then you would close the project but you have to do one final loop of closing the projects because there may be projects that are open without windows open in it is there a way to not do that run twice? Not easily. That's fine. It's a little duplication, but it's fine. Like you, like, I don't know. Maybe there's a way. Can you, I'm not going to do this. I just want to see if it's possible. Um, can you pull select or show? Okay. from the front application, so from PyCharm, menu, you can't see it down there, PyCharm, window, select, how do you show? I don't get the selector show. What I was trying to do is see if there's a way to pull back a menu item. So basically look at a menu and see if something exists. Like, like a, in a dynamic menu. Um, 
like get the get the actual name, like pull back a name. I guess would be a better way to say that. Keyboard Maestro. Dynamic menu item. Fuzzy menu item. Prompt. Selector show. Still gets the keyboard master six. Five. Seven. I need to just make a whole bunch of links to nine. So you give them some Google juice. Browser control. Plug in for Elgato Steam Deck. Oh, look at that. I actually run Stream Deck on my Windows machine though, so. Whip, 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 whip. workflows and professional, personal, prof whatever. Spotlight search prompt, execute magic row by name. Go to macro by name, go to group by name, spotlight, variables, palettes. They move when you do. Cool. Menu. Put an icon and menu on your Mac OX. X toolbar. Okay, so that's the only menu in there. XML Escape. It's the name of my new band. Automating the organization and accessibility of academic literature bookends and Devon Think Pro. Okay. Don't know about this, but it's all cool. That's a lot of text. Okay, whatever. Stream Deck plugins, yep. I thought about that. So I could actually set up Stream Deck to fire off commands, right? You could just run command line stuff. That'd be cool. I don't know what to do with it yet, but like it's there. Fuzzy item name and select menu action. Is it possible to fuzzy naming and select? December 17. But it does do regex support and you can use application as a catch all. Of the type of carrot, your match keyboard uh, does not work. Does work. Oh, ye! I didn't know that. You want the that symbol, not the right symbol there. That symbol. Okay, understood. But how do I get? How do I get a men the name of a menu item back? That's what I want. I found a feature request. I found something that it doesn't do. Maybe. What it shows status menu? I don't really know what that is. All right, hang on a second. I don't know what this is gonna do. It's just got a little menu up there that runs. Select or show. Yeah, see, it, it feels like select. This doesn't pass it to the next thing, does it? Like, it doesn't have a return value. No, because it's just firing off a select to it. Like, it hits the menu. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like you can do that. Okay, so feature request. Uh, why not go ahead and write it up? Feature request for keyboard maestro at whatever, two hours on the, the dot-ish. All right, so if, yeah, write it up or just talk about it. So feature request uh, for keyboard maestro here. Um, in this setup that I've got, there's a dynamic menu item that shows up here. And what I'd like to be able to do somehow and I don't know exactly how you do it. 
but is be able to get that value. Possibly that I know that it's the in, like the last index of it. I don't know if you could target by index, um, or like it'd be crazy, but you could basically say like, "Hey, show me all the things that are not these," because like you like this could be anything, right? This is the name of a project, and it could be anything. Um, but yeah, because I'd like to I'd like to get that back to have that to play with. I don't know what I'd do with it yet. But that would be an interesting thing to have. Anyways, that's it. Thanks. Oh, wait. That was the wrong button. Ah, whatever. Thank you. Um, okay. So now, I'll, so yeah, so what we can do is I'll just do, I'll just run that in. Because you need. You, Oh, actually, you need to do. Oh, no, that would actually break. So what I was thinking you would do is just loop through. And do. Close all if it exists, and then over here. Uh, where to go close project. But the problem is, if you broke on close all, you wouldn't necessarily hit all the projects. So what you need to do is look at all the projects first. So while close project exists, you look for close all. If close all exists, you fire it off. If not, you, you fire off close project. And then you run the next while loop where you look for close project. If it exists, look for close. Okay, that, that's how you do it. I was backwards there for a second. Or inverted or something. I don't know. Um, all right, so we're jumping, we're jumping to pot charm. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate that for a second and deactivate it. Are we lined up? Nope. We weren't lined up. There we go. Also, we can show you what's going on. Um, I should just make one of those go full screen. Um, So you can see menu items. I'm gonna do that really quick, so I because I have a feeling we're gonna run into that again. Uh, hey, look at all that stuff down there. Forgot about that. Still can't get to it. That used to fit in there. Yeah, get that out there. Oops, I was trying to move me. There we go. See, the text is even smaller. All right. So we're in this while, 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 wily. So the thing that we want to look at is, I'm just going to keep it up here for a minute. So in PyCharm, we're going to look at file, close project. Yeah, so we're going to do a loop in a loop, loop-de-loop. -loop. Uh, get rid of this. Whatever. So window, PyCharm, file, close project. Which is just going to be file, close project. Don't actually want to close it yet. Or we're just looking for it. So while that, and then let's also make sure we got a... Set timeout. 10 seconds. Cool. It's weird to me that that doesn't have a check mark by it, but whatever. File close project is enabled. So we're going to turn this off for a second. 
because what we want to do is get another while loop in here. While. Execute the following actions. While menu condition. Yeah, so the we've got an outer loop and an inner loop, and the outer loop is uh, is going to do. Wow, the volume sounds different here for some reason. Hello. Okay, who knows? Uh, the outer loop, the inner loop is the only thing the inner loop is going to do is close the windows, and then the only thing the outer loop is going to do is close the projects. That way, the outer loop makes sure that it closes all the projects, and the inner loop makes sure it closes all the windows. I think. Uh, so with this name which we should have saved and copied. Maybe it's down here still. I think it is. Which is a path. And then let's let this come back to life and let's hit it. PyCharm window editor tabs, close all. So we're gonna close them if they're hot. And then we're gonna close the project. At, after, after we've closed all the windows, we're gonna close the project if it's available, which it would have been by definition to start this loop. Or leave that sit for a minute. I'm just going to collapse that. Okay, so here we're going to fire up PyCharm. Oops. Uh, so here, let's open a couple things. Uh, make string. Sure. Sounds great. So we've got three tabs open there. And then. Oh, uh, we've only got the one project open. Let's open another project. Open recent. Uh, dev page archiver, new window. Get our projects going, we'll open our config, uh, we'll open our test URL and our readme, whatever. So three files there as well. So let's get these where you can see them all. All right, let's give it a shot. So I'm just going to run the whole thing because we want to pop to um, PyCharm with our activate. So activate PyCharm. Cool. While closed project exists in the menu, right here, under file, close project, go through the following actions, which is while window editor tabs close all exists, fire that off back up and close the project. See if this doesn't close all our projects. Crossing fingers. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I didn't know that if you didn't have anything open, it comes back to that screen. That's cool. Um, action timeout macro canceled with executed while condition. Oh. Oh my. That doesn't make any sense. If I run it. Nine, 10. Weird. All right, let's open that back up. Whoops. Come here. Just click on them. Yeah. Yeah, so you're seeing full screen, so you saw that error. Um, or that timeout. It's still banging on close project. So close project doesn't go away. There, so there's the error timing it out. Ah, close project doesn't go away. Ah. Oh, that's a bummer.
Yeah, it still thinks Page Archiver is hot. So I close that, what happens? That, okay, that closes it all the way. But, oh, I thought we were there. Bring up Page Archiver, cool. Come on down. So, all right, we're in the menu though. I mean, we can, now we just gotta find the thing that gives us the proper knowledge that we can use to make the decision. Hey, look, macros. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave this all full screen so the font sizes are gonna be a little smaller for folks, but. Oh look, it's got an actual little scissors by cut. How cute. So window. File project. See now now's when it would actually be helpful. So like if you could say, give me, is there one, two, three, four, five, six? four, eight, nine, 10, 11. If there's 11 items in the window, hit close project. All right, so let's see, let's actually close all the windows and just see what that gives us. We can close that too, right? So editor tabs is completely empty. But that still doesn't tell us. Minimize zoom, store current layout as default, restore. Okay, so what happens if we close? Do any of those disappear? Nope. It still thinks it's in that. I think we're screwed there. Or we may be screwed there. Because I don't think... Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, wait a minute, that may be it. Those menus are empty. That's gonna be it, okay. That might be it. Why is closed project checked? So if we open PyCharm again, but we don't open any projects. See, it's weird because right now there's nothing up in the menu item. Yeah, so. It Yeah, okay, so it doesn't have anything until you first open it, but then if you close back out and you get to that same window, there's no, like the menu items are still there. But so like right now, once this is open, all this stuff happens. So, so we can we can bounce off of one of those. So if, if these if these windows don't exist, or if there's nothing in these, um, then we should be able to know what's going on. Unfortunately, they've got all these little icons by them that I don't want to mess with. Um, code. Navigate. View. View recent files. So if I close this, see if it's a checkmark by it. Oh, well, I wonder. No, because it's still trying to hit it. Oh, wait a minute. This time it's still... Crap. Oh, 
thought we had it. I mean, we could rely on the timeout, but I don't like doing that because you're just mashing the menu item. And then like, I'm not sure how that would mess with other things. Um, though I guess that would probably be blocking, so it would stop it. Preferences. Appearance. Custom fonts. Let's see if there's anything in here that we can switch. Display icons and menus items. That doesn't get help us. Always show drop and drag, smooth scrolling. Yeah, see, we're just looking for something. Reopen projects on startup. Open projects in new window. Confirm before exiting IDE. We don't want to do that. When closing tool window with a running process, yes, we want to ask. Auto save. Save files when switching to a different application. I love that. That's my favorite. Scopes, notifications, path variables. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not going to click on passwords. Menus and toolbars. I feel like there's got to be add action, add separator. It's all kinds of craziness. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Did that just... Did we just find a hack? All right, so this is cool. We're going to open this. All good. Do whatever you're going to do. So file, close project. Uh-oh, about to lose my battery. So all those windows are there. Oh, but they're not. Okay, but wait, if I... Okay. So you can close a project. You can bounce to another application and then come back. Because when, when that happens, it cleared, it cleared the menu. Let's just make sure that really works. So in page archiver. Close project. All the mini items are still there. And sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. But if we go somewhere else and then come back, there's our hack. Okay. <laughs> I'm determined to make this happen. It's gonna be so nice tomorrow when I go bloop. And then the day after when I go bloop. Um, here, let's do this so we can see what's going on. Yeah, uh, that gives me hope. All right, so move to Pot Charm. While the following are true, file close projects in it. So I'm assuming <laughs> that that won't be enabled when the file menu doesn't exist. Seems logical. So once we've closed our project, we're going to come in here. We're going to switch to the finder and then back to PyCharm. Start the loop again, take a look, 
see what's happening. Go from there. Cross your fingers. All right, page archiver. Open a couple files. File one. File two. All mushed. Uh, file. Open recent. Scratch pad. New window. We get our strings, terminal size, print numbers. So we got three tabs open in each. Here, I guess we can actually do this again, right? We can flip this up. All right, let's collapse it all down, run it. Uh, I'm confident we can get rid of that right now. Oops. If I get rid of it, I mean get rid of it. There we go. All right, let's run it, see what happens. Closing them, closing them. Went to PyCharm. Cool. Oh, you know what I should have done? Here. So I think it stopped, but we should actually have it send us a message. Just, oh, wait a minute. Why did that open the files back up? It shouldn't have done that. So those all closed. Why didn't it close them all for the other app? Oh, I wonder if it switched so fast that it, the menu hadn't become active yet. Cause like it closed them on the first one and there's no other like logic going on here. Is there a sleep for like a few hundred milliseconds? Sleep screen, put computer sleep. Nope. Wait, how about a wait? Gotta wait, pause. Project close. So we're assuming it'll be there when we first start. So execute the following action. Pause for 0.1 seconds. Maybe. 0.1 seconds. This is just my guess as to what's happening. I don't know. We'll see what's happening. So we got we got them both up again. Let's run it. That closed them. It could have just been, a, I don't know what's going on. That worked. So maybe that was Voodoo, maybe not. But it came back to PyCharm and it's good to go there. Um, close and open PyCharm. So that clears it. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. I like this. So. Um, resize, where's config updates for pre-stream? See, this is... I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this because I, I make an update to PyCharm to update its font size. In order to get that, you've got to close it and reopen it but it'd be helpful if I close the windows. You know, I'd like to have in here and I'll bet it has in here. 
is a note. Aw. Send MIDI note off on. Interesting. Comment? Comment. There we go. Update. Config. Free stream. So that's all the font sizes. Closes PyCharm Windows. So I'm going to take this out and restarts it. And then we're going to put Uh-oh. Where did that go? Oh, come on. Can you not do two at a time? Surely you can drag and drop, right? Whoa, what's going on? Okay, copy. Bestie. All right, so we're going to activate PyCharm. We're going to close all its windows. Quit PyCharm. Quit PyCharm. Oh, and actually, quit and relaunch is what we want to do. Quit and relaunch. Nope. We want to do this first. Set its font size, then quit and relaunch. So if I've got that, Coming in there, I should actually also does all the window cleanup. Close stream app windows, right? So this is because I want to do that move on PyCharm at the same time that I'm doing its update for its config file. That should be it. I'm not going to worry about that in PyCharm right now. Okay, so let's test it, like full bore. Uh, I don't think I'm closing tabs, right? Yeah, no, okay, so it's fine. Um, where am I going? Over here. All right, so run post stream macro. So this is just gonna make font sizes smaller, basically is what this is doing.
Right. That work? Yeah. Regular size fonts. And then regular size fonts. And... Okay, so this is open. This is going to close in a second. I think. So stream prep now should... Let's do a couple things. So let's make some stuff in VB Edit. Here's VB Edit window. What all are we closing? Text Wrangler? We close in Text Wrangler? I can't remember. There's Sublime Text 3. There's Sublime Text 2. Which those are going to close as well as get their. Um, We are doing text wrangler. So we're doing sublime text two, sublime text three. So this is sublime text two. So let's put it right here so we can see the font maybe jump right before it uh, gets updated. I kind of wish there were like groups in here that you could do I mean I know you can make a macro and then assemble them that way but you can't see I don't think you can open up like I'd like to expand out and see and see the rest of the macro and group for group ah uh, group I swear I swear I looked for that earlier and didn't find it So this is Sublime Text 2 and 2 and close all the windows in 2. Can you name the group? Oh, okay. We found one thing, apparently. Disable. Rename. Of course not. <laughs> and the stuff is right where you, like, it's going, it's exactly where I'm clicking for it. This is, oh, it's so good. Oops, come here. Oh, I put groups and groups and groups. Oh wait, how far can you nest it? It keeps going inside. I wish it wouldn't do that. I wish it go here. Whoops. Copy. Paste. Now see it goes inside when I do that. Copy. Paste. Oh, I guess you gotta click on it to get with the wrapper for its target. So update Sublime Text to Oh, but you can't double click on it to rename it. You have to right click. This should be is this three? Yes. Whoops. Ooh, don't know where that went. Get in there. Oh, okay, that's fine. Update two, update three. Uh, is update really the right term? Prep. Prep. 
And so this is text wrangler and this is text wrangler. Prep text wrangler. I like these groups. <sighs> Prep BB edit. Prep Pi Charm. Yeah, so really what I could do, so I've got run prep stream here. Instead of making these macro, instead of external macros, I could, because I was using that for separation basically. Like there's some stuff for the config stuff that I'll want to have separate because I want to be able to switch it back and forth independent maybe of running the full stream. I don't know. Uh, but run prep. So we can get rid of this one. Export, rename, disable, duplicate. Oh, I guess I got to do it this way. That's another thing about this app. Like the, the buttons kind of feel a little like non-professional, which put me off from it a little bit, which is kind of ridiculous, but it's what happened. Um, so we don't need that anymore because these are named Subprep Sublime Text 2 and 3. So this is update configs. So we can actually just do that. Update configs pre-stream. Yeah, because this I don't need independent stuff from this. This is just going. So grab that and put this here, put this here, put this here. I love it. Close non-stream apps. So if we just make a group out of that. I don't know what I just did. That was the wrong thing to do. Don't do that. Oops, got to hit minus. Got to hit minus. You come here, we make a new action. We do group again. We're in the wrong place. We need to be here. Now we add a group. And we drop all this stuff in that group. Rename to close non stream apps and then we take that and we cut that and we put that here and we delete that and we get rid of this So that's our post stream pool, which we don't want to do yet. Resize windows for stream with chat. So here's here's where I do want to have these things separate. Because I want I want to be able to flip these switches independent of running the full stream prep. So that's cool right there. And then open finder windows to review. Though that can be
Uh, that's one thing. Group. 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 Group, 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 group. Rename. Open finder windows to review. Cut that. That goes into prep stream after this. Delete that. Delete that. Okay, what else? Close and open PyCharm. Didn't we already move that in? Did I copy that instead of cut it? Uh, clone, prep sublime text, prep PyCharm. Can you rename these? Oh, you can. Look at that. So that's all the PyCharm stuff, including all the magic. And that's just the close and open, which goes ends with the finder stuff. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Resize windows we're keeping, posts we're keeping, update configs for posts. That's actually going to go in. So. Uh, group. It's like great little refactoring going on here. Put that in there. That goes there. Rename. Set fonts for post stream. For human readability. I guess, yeah. All right. Um, here. I don't know if that's better or worse. But we're going to cut this and paste that into the post stream, which is calling this, which we're going to get rid of, so then we can get rid of this. This is clean. I like this. This is nice. Wait. Oh, that icon threw me there for a second, but it's just going, it's just showing you the other one. Maybe because it's only got one macro in it that it's showing that? Just, it threw me because it's showing the brackets over here instead of the little, uh, Cascading windows. All right, let's move some stuff. Oh, I should definitely set up. I gotta figure out a better way to do the GIF, um, which I, I know how to a better way to do the GIF. I just don't want to have to do it yet, which is installing a new operating system and then a piece of software that makes my background a, um, watch my thing, browser. All right, so here's a mess of stuff. And what, sh including Keyboard Meister over here, and what should be able to happen is if I come here, and like, notice that the fonts for Sublime Text are tiny. And then PyCharm also at size 14 fonts. Well, they're not tiny, that's actually viewable for me. Um, but so everything's there. All right, so, so there's our mess. Human readable size fonts. Human readable size fonts, human readable size fonts. All kinds of stuff all over the place. That thing keeps flashing and it keeps messing with me. I need to, I gotta figure out a better way to do that. I know better ways to do that. I just haven't done it yet. Um, that's on the list. It's on the list. How about that? So run stream prep and hold your breath. Don't save. Ooh, did that pause it? It paused it while it was waiting for response. That's awesome. I didn't actually test that yet. PyCharm's firing up. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. There's my things to check. PyCharm ready to go. I don't know how to tell PyCharm to open and I could tell it to open Scratchpad again, which there may be a way to do that, but that's for another time. So trash, yep, I want to empty my trash. That's part of it, yes. 
That all looks good. There's nothing crazy in there. That all looks good. There's nothing crazy in there. Here's the kill, so I can kill these, so I can clean that up. Buy charms there, and then we should be, uh, if we look at Sublime Text, our font size is good. Sublime Text 3, font size is good. Pi Charm. Stand by. Font size is good. There's your prep. So that took a lot of time to get there. It took a few hours. Uh, and I, I put I put several arrows in there, but a, a bunch of that too is learning keyboard maestro, right? So it's figuring out how that application works. And now other stuff that I want to do with that will go much faster. It's that getting through the first hurdle, um, which I'm now well through. Uh, so that's super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let me get, uh, here, we'll bring this up uh, We can close that. Don't save. It's fine. Um, bring those up. So just to look at what we're doing, let's see how many of these actually got done. Uh, see if you can close BB edits. Yep. Sublime text we did. Windows in general, we actually figured out how to do. Uh, we got pretty good control of that with the menu. Um, haven't looked at this yet for BB Edits font. Uh, haven't looked at Text Wrangler's font. Haven't looked at NV Edits or DB Connection. Okay, so th these are the things that we did. We got we got these knocked out, and then hotkey to blur things. I feel like we did more than this, but whatever. Uh, so we'll just throw those on the list of accomplishments. Yeah, because we got it. So we got our windows closing and moving. Sweet. Uh, that's cool. That's really good. I'm happy with that. That's a good, uh, good slog. Slog wasn't really slog. It was kind of fine. Um, and then the post stream one will set all my fonts back. It doesn't really move the windows because the windows are going to move around naturally as I start throwing stuff everywhere. Um, but it gets all the fonts set back uh, for me and sets all the configs back for me so that I'm not dealing with these giant fonts all the time. Um, like that. Uh, yeah, oh, so, yeah, so you can see that's how much I crop in in order to get the fonts going up. But you can see the reason I do that is kind of doing that full, even up that full screen like the menu items and stuff get really small. Um, and the same thing with like uh, links and other kind of UI uh, Chrome stuff. So this is the compromise that I've kind of walked into is setting up this this amount of crop in um, with a, with bumped up fonts. So that's where that is. Uh, anyways, uh, I think it's going to do it for now. Uh, I'm going to be back on later tonight. Don't know exactly what time, probably around 8, uh, maybe 7.30. And we'll kind of go from there and see uh, see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to be digging into uh, the YouTube API. Now, I kind of wanted to do this and get this a little bit set up. Um, and then I'm going to dig into the YouTube API because uh, I'm spending time on that every day. And that's the time I will spend on that tomorrow or tonight. Whatever. Uh, you all have a good one. We'll see you. Thanks. Take care. Be kind.